Welcome to another episode of Jack Ask, where I answer your gambling and math questions. Let's check out this week's questions and answers today on Jack Ask. This question comes from Reddit r Blackjack. Does it matter where you sit at the blackjack table? I only sit on the sixth chair, the last seat. Is it me or isn't this the best seat? It enables you to control the table. This may raise a few eyebrows, but let me tell you that where you sit at the blackjack table will not affect your winnings or losses in blackjack in the long run. It's true that you may occasionally take the dealer's bus card. Hit me, hit me, hit me, busted. <laughs> Or sometimes you might save the table when you hit that soft 18 versus a dealer 10. But statistically, it doesn't matter where you sit. And the same is true when a bad player sits at third base. I know a lot of people will swear that a bad player will negatively affect the table, but this is just the result of confirmation bias. If you're losing, you're gonna notice things that you wouldn't normally notice. And in this case, you're probably desperate for someone to blame. So when you see a donkey hit a hard 13 with a dealer five up card and bust with a 10, you'll definitely get upset when the dealer's next card is a six and they make a 21, edging out your hard 20. The confirmation bias happens a lot because many times when you win, you don't rewind the tape to try to figure out what would have happened if the last player acted differently. If you were to replay every single scenario, you'd see that the frequency of the deviations will help you as much as they hurt you. Not only that, but there's a huge percentage of the time where the outcome is exactly the same. And this phenomenon is supported by just about every blackjack book I've ever read and can be demonstrated with simple simulators. And I know this goes against what many, many people perceive at the tables, but I'm telling you that those perceptions are inaccurate. The next question is also from Reddit, R Craps. How do you decide which table to play on? This Reddit poster says he looks at the players at the table, looks at the smiling to frowning face ratio, but what other strategies are there? This is mostly a question of preference, so it depends on the type of experience you enjoy. Obviously, we can eliminate completely full tables. I mean, if they're completely full, you can't play right? And for empty tables, I'd avoid them if you don't like to shoot or if you don't like being the center of attention. If you join an empty table, all eyes will be on you. So personally, I like a table where I have a little bit of elbow room. If I'm shooting, I don't like a lot of people on the other side of the table either. If there's too much chaos going on, I don't like tossing and accidentally hitting someone's flailing arm when they make a last minute bet. But a table with maybe three or four empty spots is my sweet spot. You don't have to worry about the dice coming to you every few shooters, so it's more relaxing without the pressure of everyone constantly watching you. And when the shooter is on a hot streak, it's fun to feed off the energy of a cheering crowd. The next question is from Reddit as well, our roulette. Looking for an app or website to calculate the payouts on roulette bets. So yeah, this guy is just asking if there's a tool where you can enter your roulette bets and see what the payouts are. So easy question, I like these. For you subscribers out there, you already know that I've written a tool called the Roulette Bet Analyzer that does exactly this. Just pick the wheel type and enter your bets as you would at the roulette table. Below the betting layout, it'll show you how much you're gonna win for each result. You'll also be able to see the expected loss per spin and the percent coverage of the wheel. There's a bunch of other metrics you can check, but watch this video for more details. And look at that, someone even posted a response on Reddit that links to it. So someone asked a question on my last video. To further the second question, what is the optimal coverage of the wheel? Since I mentioned it doesn't matter what numbers you're betting on on the wheel, but what the coverage percentage is. So for any given bet amount, there's not an optimal percent coverage of the wheel, so long as you're not covering 36 or more numbers. And I have a whole video on why it's mathematically incorrect to bet on 36 or more numbers at a time. And you'd think that this goes without saying, but I've seen dozens of roulette systems where the author suggests betting on more than 35 numbers. But assuming that Fisher Frank already knows this, you can bet on fewer numbers if you want a larger payday, and you can bet on more numbers if you want to win a smaller amount, but more frequently. So if you wanna post your own gambling question, you can submit your question in the comments below, or you could post it to my Discord. FYI, you have a much higher chance of your question being answered if you post it to Discord. So here's another question that's a comment on my last video. Are Interblock and Alpha Street systems free wheels with random results, or are they RNG and run off a program? Are they considered slots? So if there is a physical roulette wheel, the randomness is gonna be determined by physics, not by an RNG. There may be an RNG that determines the velocity or the revolutions per minute of the wheel, but most of the randomness is gonna be determined by physics. But if we're talking about an electronic table game with no physical wheel, the RNG will determine what number is hit. And the number that you hit is gonna be based on a random number between one and 37 for a single zero wheel, 
and one in 38 on a double zero wheel. It's not gonna be calculated based on the return to player percentage. And I can't speak about all electronic table games, but for the ones in Nevada, you're dealing with an RNG that randomly picks the number that hits. It's not trying to look at what your bets are and then trying to figure out what results make you lose or win according to the desired hold percentage. And that's true of most electronic table games in Nevada. If you have a video poker machine, it won't randomly decide that it's time to give someone a royal flush. The randomness of the results should always mimic the randomness of the real world tools used in the live table version of the game. So with video poker, that would be a 52 card deck, 53 cards if you're playing with a joker based game. For roulette, every number will have a one in 37 or one in 38 chance of hitting on every spin, depending on whether you're playing with single or double zero. And with craps, each result will have a one in 36 chance of being rolled. Here's another Jack ask question. D'Alembert strategy, is it good or bad? So I tested the D'Alembert strategy a few weeks back. I think it's a decent strategy for trying to win a small amount of your bankroll. I tested it under the name 36 double D, double D standing for D'Alembert's dozens. With D'Alembert, you bet $100 on a single dozen or column. When you lose, you add another $100 to that bet. And when you win, you remove a $100 unit until you only have $100 left on it. So it's a ladder system. If you start with a $4,000 bankroll, you can win $1,000 around 70% of the time. That's pretty decent. And I made a video of my review of this system, so check it out if you wanna see it in action. Next question is from Reddit R Roulette. What exactly are those roulette games with cards? So this guy went to a tribal casino in California and saw the roulette tables with cards. In California, there are weird laws that prevent bets from being settled by the roll of dice or by a ball landing on a wheel. These were laws that aim to specifically ban roulette and craps. And for some reason, these laws extend into tribal California Native American casinos, even though these tribal casinos are able to offer house bank table games and slots. But some sneaky lawyers figured out a way around these silly restrictions. Some of these tribal casinos have card-based equivalents of both craps and roulette. So for roulette, you spin a paddle-based wheel, like in Wheel of Fortune, and when it stops, the dealer pulls out a card with the winning number. And looky here, the top response for this Reddit question refers to one of my videos about this very subject. The next one is a good one from R Vegas on Reddit. Are showgirls not allowed inside casinos or hotels? You never see them inside casinos. I'm walking back to my hotel between one and two, and I always get chased by these showgirls wanting pictures for money. The minute I enter a casino, they stop and go the other way. Are they banned? Just thought it was interesting. So, bless your heart. So no, those women dressed up in full showgirl regalia are not real Vegas showgirls. Showgirls are mostly a relic from the past. They used to be a place where horny men could take their wives and pretend they were being classy while ogling over right round American titties. There is still a show called Fantasy at the Luxor, which is a stage-based striptease but I think showgirls have mostly been gone since they shut down the Riviera. Those girls you see on the strip are just buskers and hustlers trying to get you to take a picture with them so they can shake you down for tips. And if you ever make the mistake of taking a picture with them, they will get really aggressive with you if you don't pay them what they want. And usually what they want is not what you agreed to. They may tell you that a pick is just $20, then after you take the photo, they'll say it's $20 per showgirl and per guy who was in the photo. And as a general rule, I don't interact with any buskers in the street, it's almost always negative EV. And don't forget to check out the Jack Ace merch store. I've got quite a few new products, including the super awesome roulette Hawaiian shirt. Most of the merch is gambling related, but there's also a lot of crypto products. We have a few video game products. If you're a subscriber, I guarantee that there's something in my store that's perfect for you, so check it out. The next question is from Reddit, our roulette. Are you good at roulette because you're good at math? So this guy is watching two guys play roulette and they're doing very well. For some reason, he assumes they're doing some kind of weird math that's helping them win at roulette. So am I good at roulette because I'm good at math? The answer is no. In fact, nobody is good at roulette because they're good at math, because nobody is good at roulette. A complete novice will be just as good as a veteran so long as they don't bet on the five number bet and they don't bet on 36 or more numbers at a time. Everything on 34. There's a reason why you never hear about professional roulette players, because there's no way to get an edge over the wheel. And because there is no combination of negative expectation bets that will result in a positive expectation. How are we gonna get out of here? We'll dig our way out. <laughs> No, now dig up, stupid. Next question is from Reddit, R Roulette. 
using the law of averages to your advantage. So this guy is talking about the law of averages. Some people will refer to this as the law of large numbers. He's saying in the long run, you're gonna get 50% black, 50% reds, 50% odds, 50% evens. And if you see a streak of one or the other, you can bet the opposite and you'll eventually make money. But anyway, I have a whole video on the law of large numbers and how people like this misinterpret it. This law doesn't tell you that things will balance out because the pendulum swings in the other direction. The way things balance out is because what you have observed in the past will eventually become irrelevant. This is how things balance out. The next question is also from Reddit or Blackjack. They're asking about dealer assistance for card counters. I heard in a video that the dealer can have the possibility of making card counters' lives easier. The poster is asking if the dealer can have any influence on the profitability of a card counter. If you're counting cards, there are a few things a dealer can do to improve your chances of winning or to improve your overall experience. The number one thing they can do is deal deep into the deck or shoe. Besides paying three to two for blackjacks, penetration is probably the next most important factor in profitability for blackjack card counters. This is because the deeper you deal into a shoe, the more likely you are to encounter a positive true count. And a positive true count is what indicates that you have an edge over the house. I need my own queen, Ray. There's lots of them. There's lots of them? Lots and lots of them. I'm gonna double down. Queen, queen. But besides good penetration, the dealer can do things like remain silent when you deviate from basic strategy. Hit me. You have 17, sir. I like to live dangerously. Sometimes a dealer will announce splitting tens when you do so with a large chunk of change on the table. Sometimes they'll ask you, are you sure you don't want even money when you refuse it? Sometimes they'll ask you if you're sure you want to insure your 14 versus their ace with a big bet. Anything they do to tip off the pit boss that you might be counting cards could cut your playing time short. So if they don't bring a lot of attention to you, that's always a good thing. So that's it for this episode of Jack Ask. If you have questions you'd like me to answer, ask them in the comments below, or better yet, post them in my Discord. And if you just have a jackpot you'd like me to share, you can post your photos in my Discord as well. If you enjoyed this Q&A session, don't forget to like and subscribe. Always gamble responsibly. Never play six to five blackjack. And peace out, donkeys. <laughs>